Hello, good afternoon. It's always a joy to see so many people at this concert. I'm Pierpaolo Polsonetti. I teach music history. And it's a real pleasure for me to introduce this concert because I'm an amateur clarinet and saxophone player. So this is a wonderful, wonderful group. They specialize in uh, uh, new music across different genres. So keep an open mind, uh, open heart for this mostly experimental music. If you are interested, at 4 p.m. Everson Hall, there will be a lecture by Patricia Vergara, professor at UC Merced, on Colombian uh, songs of um, protest from the um, campesino movements. Uh, uh, and we have a lot to offer here. Tomorrow at 7, wonderful concert by Ensemble Coclico on improvis semi-improvised Renaissance music. Saturday from 9.30 to 5 p.m. a symposium to honor Anna Maria Busseberger, who is retiring, uh, on improvisation and composition. I'm going to turn this devil off just uh, because it is going to make some noise, please do the same. <laughs> Locate the exits, buckle up, and uh, have, a good, have a good evening. <laughs> afternoon. We are Splinter Reads. Uh, we are delighted to be back. Uh, I've had the good fortune of teaching here at UC Davis as the oboe instructor the last couple of years, but uh, before that took place, Splinter was here in one of our first projects as a group very shortly after we started. And in fact, it wasn't in this amazing building yet. This was over in the Mondavi Center while this was still under construction. And uh, in the meantime, we have had a blast working together as a unit uh, playing concerts all across the U.S., gradually amassing a very ornery repertoire of a lot of requintet music, most of which was written specifically for us. And that is absolutely our happy place, is working directly with living composers, collaborating, uh, coming up with crazy ideas, things that probably shouldn't work on our instruments, and then figuring out that we can do it anyway. Uh, working with electronics, multimedia, 
So uh, we wanted to present a, a cross-section of that sort of programming today within this hour. And uh, if you hate One Piece, stick around for five minutes and something will sound completely different coming up next. Uh, and in fact, every, well, almost everything today was written specifically for us with two exceptions, the first two pieces on the program, but they were both arranged for us. So up next we have a, a classic by Georgi Ligeti. This is a characteristically sardonic and rollicking piece that was originally written for harpsichord, uh, but there are also uh, fully endorsed by the composer versions out there for barrel organ and various other uh, keyboard contraptions, so we thought it was not that far of a stretch to see what we could do with our reeds. Uh, and this was arranged by our good friend Jonathan Russell.
thank you again. Uh, I just want to show you something. This uh, previously was my Ligeti read, and <laughs> it is no longer my Ligeti read because it's cracked. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, again, we're so happy that you're joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, the next piece on the program uh, is a piece by Kara Haxo, who is uh, uh, now, I guess, a resident of Ohio, but she previously uh, was living in Oregon, where she just received her DMA from the uh, University of Oregon. Uh, but we all know her because uh, we were very lucky uh, to be uh, the ensemble in residence at a really fantastic summer program in New Hampshire called the Walden School for Young Musicians. Um, this is a program that's very personal to me because I used to teach there for many years on the faculty. Um, it's a, a pre-college program uh, for students who are interested in composing and improvising and just creating music. And so um, we were very lucky to be there for a full week uh, and uh, many of the faculty at the, the program wrote pieces for us. And so this piece um, exercises is uh, two movements and each of the movements, uh, Kara, who also uh, had attended the Walden School, um, uh, as a student she became very good friends, lifelong friends with many of the other students and these two movements were dedicated to each uh, two of her very good friends. Um, I would also mention that this piece is on our new uh, uh, album called Hypothetical Islands, which I believe uh, is for sale if any of you are interested. Um, but this is Exercises by Kara Haxo. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, last season, we were fortunate enough to uh, participate in a residency at the University of Miami. And when we were there, uh, there were six faculty composers and they each wrote a new piece for us. And the piece we're going to play for you now uh, is one of those six um, by Lansing McCloskey. And this is the, I guess it's only the second performance, so this would be the California premiere. So uh, it's a very fun piece, uh, very rhythmical, lots of hot licks for us to play. <laughs> and there's some nice lyrical melodies as well. So please enjoy hashtag playlist. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Our next piece up is another semi-premiere of sorts. This is the US premiere, at least, uh, of a piece called Shapeshifter Dialogues by Matthew Welch. And unless life got in the way, Matthew is going to join us here today. Is that true? Yay! All right, cool. So Matthew is an old friend of, uh, of ours from multiple different chapters and eddies and uh, subcurrents of the new music world. Uh, Matthew is a, uh, a I, I, well, I don't know, perhaps the, the reigning avant-garde bagpipe player in the scene at the moment. Uh, his training gets, uh, has, has spanned worlds of post-minimalism, uh, intensive uh, ethnomusicological study of Indonesia in particular, and, um, and the creative music continuum. I actually first met Matthew improvising in a coffee shop while he was a student of Anthony Braxton 20 years ago in Wesleyan, Connecticut. Uh, last time I worked with Matthew was actually playing an Anthony Braxton composition that required a saxophonist and I to try desperately to circular breathe for 45 minutes straight to keep up with the uh, bagpipe. It was uh, an adventure to say the least. Uh, this piece will be not quite that loud, um, but at least as fun. And uh, it is, well, I think the program knows me for themselves pretty well. This is from an upcoming opera. Is that, I got that right, Matthew? Depends on where things go, right? But this is a scene that uh, takes a, a lot of its, uh, a lot of its cues from Indonesian shadow poetry. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next piece on the program um, is also related to that Walden program that Dana spoke about earlier. Um, our friend Sky McClay uh, is an instructor there, and uh, we first got to workshop the, a part of this piece at that um, program, but the actual funding for this commission came from the Chamber Music America Classical Commissioning Program. Um, Sky is a wonderful composer who is based at Valparaiso University in Indiana. She also plays oboe, has lots of zany ideas in all of her pieces. Uh, choppy in this piece refers to uh, Sky being from the Midwest. I uh, was thinking about uh, choppy lakes with waves that clash into each other and all of the different interesting uh, visual things that relate to that. Um, a lot of the texture, is, at the beginning at least, is based on multiphonics, and there's a lot of different waves and clashing of those parts, and there might be some literal waves in the piece, and you know, it's a bit of an experience. Um, anything else to say about it? We'll let Kyle get prepared, and then we're gonna play Choppy by Sky McLeod. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. We have one more piece, and uh, this piece actually requests some audience participation, and it actually asks you all to break the cardinal rule of concert attendance. I would like you all to take out your cell phones and turn the volume all the way up. Um, I don't know if you saw it in the program note, but um, Paulo wrote this piece sort of exploring uh, the way that we listen to music electronically. So go to the website antennastudies.com, the title of the piece, and it should take you to a SoundCloud page uh, with a big play icon on it. Don't hit it yet, uh, but at a point in the piece I will give a giant cue and you are all invited to press play on your phone and be participants in the piece with us. Um, <coughs> the original piece that she wrote is a big sort of evening length work um, that involves hijacking a local uh, radio station to project part of the piece, but we have sort of our own uh, hacked version of that that we're gonna do um, tonight or this afternoon. And um, yeah, we think this piece is really wonderful. It's very beautiful. Um, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much to UC Davis for having us, and uh, we thank you as well for coming.